Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video might be a little bit different because I had some technical difficulties and with my new camera, I can't have enough data, data stored on my phone to edit where I normally edit. So we are trying an app on my laptop and I'm hoping to God that this sped up version is not as choppy as it looks at this point when I upload it. I hope it's a lot better. Anyway, enough of that. For this video, I'm gonna show you how I made, as you could tell in the thumbnail, the under the sea gelatin cake. This was something that I had requested by a subscriber and she wanted to know what my take on this kind of a design would be. So this is what I came up with and this is how I did it. We have our four layered seven inch cake is what this was. Now it's all buttercreamed and ready to go. And what I am doing is I am cutting the board board down to be about a quarter of an inch to up to a half an inch wider all the way around the cake. Because this is where my expandable um, cake, I can't remember what it's called, but the tin that I put around this board, it's what's gonna keep the gelatin in. So I am just putting the cake on top of the board, trying to center it. And I'm using this super clear gelatin. Now this stuff is not cheap. I will say it's not cheap, but that one bag, I only used six tablespoons out of, so this would last you a long time. I did a double recipe, so I just followed the recipe on the bag. And the super clear is going to show you all the details. The gelatin cake I did before was not with a super clear, but I wasn't trying to make it so that you could see an image behind it. So it didn't matter so much, but this time I wanted to be able to see straight through that gelatin. So like I said, just mix it up according to the directions. Now what I'm doing is I had made, I had put and sprinkled the gelatin on top of the water to dissolve it in that, set it to the side so that it could firm up and soak up all of the uh, moisture. And then I mixed my sugar and my water. I'm just putting it in a clear bowl so that we can see what's going on here. And once that got to the right temperature, I'm just putting the gelatin back in and stirring it until it's completely dissolved. Now, there were some fails in this. Since I have not done this cake before with this particular product before, um, a lot of this was an experiment. I'll be honest, I do that a lot. I do a lot of experimenting on this channel. And I love to see a trend and figure out how it might have been done. I really love to do that. So um, I did a double recipe and what I should have done, and it worked, but what would have worked better is if I had added less water or more gelatin when I was blooming it so that it was a stronger gelatin. And then here I just added my food coloring, just regular gel food coloring and just stir it to incorporate. And then you're gonna set that aside for one to two hours according to the directions. Now, if you add more gelatin or less water, I have a feeling you won't need to let it set, have to let it set aside that long. You wanna wait till it's clear. And I put parchment paper and um, foil underneath the cake to get it uh, to keep that gelatin, if there is some spillage through the bottom, to keep it, you know, contained. And then I just put it on one of my discs that I use. And these, this is how I got the, uh, the um, under the sea image. I used edible images on edible paper. I just found a photo online that I could print and um, make sure that it's not a copyrighted photo or if you get it from Shutterstock that you have an account, you know, to get an image so that you're paying for it. And then, um, yeah, so this is how, the only way I could figure out to do this was that there's gotta be an edible image involved here, right? There's gotta be an edible image. So I'm just cutting off the extra. And with this, I learned some things too. In the beginning, I put buttercream on the cake. Now, what I wish I had done, I'm just here brushing some piping gel on it to stick it to the cake. What I had wished I had done was used maybe butter ganache. Cause I have a feeling that would have, you'll see what I'm talking about later, but um, the buttercream seemed to have softened some and you could kind of see the white buttercream through the image. 
because when you're mixing gelatin and an edible image together, you're kind of um, playing with fate because <laughs> edible images and liquids don't typically go together. So I knew when I did this that I was taking a chance, but it did overall work, but there are some things that I would tweak. And that's why I said that this is a fail because there are things I learned along the way. So I would have done a butter ganache underneath. I might've even colored it, um, added some pale, you know, some baby blue or a little bit of navy blue color to the butter ganache. And you would need to use oil-based food coloring for that. So that behind the image, you still have blue. So even if the image loses some of its color, which it seemed to have, you wouldn't notice it as much. Because with the white buttercream behind there, when the image faded a bit, um, there's a lot of white that came through. So the butter ganache potentially would, I'm gonna try this again, but the butter ganache potentially would have um, been a little firmer base to the cake to begin with, and adding the color would help with the depth of color, if that all makes sense. Now I'm just adjusting my ring so that it sits over that cake board that I had cut down to size. So that is inside of this ring. And then I put it on another board so that you can move it around. Because once you get that gelatin on, you're gonna need to put it in your refrigerator overnight. And that's exactly what I did was overnight. I'm just fidgeting with it, making sure that it's setting tight to the board. And then just wrap the foil and the parchment paper around the base. Now I know this is a longer video, guys, but there's a lot of details. And I honestly, I don't show you everything. There was too much to show you. And I'd cut a piece of acetate to go all the way around the cake. I had measured it ahead of time. Um, and then I'm just using some transparent tape to anchor it together. And that also hides the seam so that the gelatin doesn't seep in between the two layers of your acetate. And just making sure that it fits. Because it needs to be snug to the ring and not touching the cake. And as even all the way around as you can possibly get it. And then I just put a little bit of um, gelatin in there along the bottom and let that firm up first. Put it in the refrigerator and let that firm up so that you have kind of a barrier instead of pouring it all in, potentially all of it falling, coming out. And then I had made some edible moss. I have done this in another video and I will put a link to that video. And as you can see there, um, this is another fail. <laughs> I cooked it too long. It goes in your microwave. And I was trying to get it to be have more air bubbles in it to make it look like coral. Um, but I cooked it 30 seconds too long. So go according to the directions in um, the recipe and the link that I will share with you. And then I'm making some, some um, isomalt coral. And I'm just following the directions on the package again. I've done this one other time, but I thought this is a perfect chance to use this technique again. And with your isomalt, all you do is you combine the water with the powder and you let it simmer and it actually boils until you get it to 320 degrees. Then add your food coloring. And the way to get this coral is to add some ice. You can even use more chopped up ice than what I used here um, and put it in a container, a glass container. And once you have your ice malt made and ready to go, you can just pour it directly over the ice and let it and put it in your refrigerator and let it cool. And here I'm checking the temperature. I like to use this infrared Thermometer. You can use a candy thermometer thermometer if you want to, but I like this. It's just it's just so simple and you don't one less thing to wash. Let's be honest, just one less thing to wash too. Once it reaches the temperature, I take it off of the heat. And those bubbles will go away as you are circling, circling the pan with your food coloring in there. I used purple and I used blue. I probably could have edited some of this out. Sorry, guys. Like I said, trying to learn this app. 
and then just pour it right over your um, ice. Instant coral, it's really pretty cool. And since the ice is so cold, that isomalt firms up almost immediately. But I just go ahead and put it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes, just to be, just to be on the safe side. Now that that moss has cooled, I am just ripping off, ripping it in chunks. And since the inside, the, the middle of it was overcooked, I just discarded that. I didn't need all that anyways. And when you make your moss, just use the same recipe and add different colors to it, whatever colors that you want. It's really simple. And this is how I get my isomalt out of my containers. I just have a bowl of hot water. Typically, I would just do this in the sink and just run hot water into it and that melts the ice and you're left with your coral. But to be able to show you, I wanted to get a bowl so that you could see what I was doing. And it's really pretty. And somebody asked me on the last time if um, the isomalt melts when you pour the hot water on it. And the answer is, yeah, maybe a little bit. But if you set it aside and don't put it on like a, a paper towel or a towel because it will stick to that, set it to the side and, you know, they will dry. I would just put them on um, like these plastic boards that I have or even on a piece of parchment paper or a silicone mat. That would be good too. And by the time you're ready to use them, they'll be ready to go. One more thing about the edible image that I might try next time is I might try spraying it with some confectioner's glaze before I put the gelatin in there. I don't know if that would protect the image a little bit more, because as you can see it here, it is faded some. But it's still pretty. I still really like it. Because you can still see the image in there. Then I'm just cutting the tape off and then just removing it. And here was where I had a problem too. I had a few problems, guys. <laughs> a few problems. I'm just honest. I'm as honest as I can be, um, which is very honest. And um, if I had a more firm gelatin, this would have pulled off a little bit better. You can see a little bit of it stuck to the acetate. Still not a problem. It still worked great. Just I needed a firmer gelatin. And here I'm just using this biscuits and I'm just putting them in the processor and chopping them up to use as sand. You could use animal crackers, you can use graham crackers. You can even use brown sugar, which does tend to dry hard at room temperature. Um, you can do a mixture of them. Any of those work well. And here we're about to see, uh, this just happened recently again, guys. I'm so mad, I thought my camera was on. I'm just failing all over the place when it comes to this whole camera situation. I love it, but man, this is a work in progress. I thought it was on. Maybe the battery even died, I'm not sure. It's hard to say, but all I did, I can tell you what I did, was I had just attached all these details with just buttercream. That's it, no big secret there. And then I'm just using buttercream around the board to get my sand to stick. And you can see I have some fondant seaweed that I had made. Now, I would suggest not letting your seaweed rest directly against the gelatin, gelatin because gelatin and fondant do not play well together. The fondant will kind of melt your gelatin. So make sure that it's not just sitting right next to it. We'll put a little barrier of some buttercream or something between the two. And there it is all done, guys. I hope you liked it and be looking for some more gelatin cakes. I'm gonna try to tweak this and I have another idea already, something new, a new trend that we're seeing all over the place on Instagram. And I hope you give it a try, but follow my mistakes and don't make the same mistakes. And we'll catch you next time. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much.
and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.